Bobby, this is uh, Rick Weber's appointment schedule for tomorrow. Yes, Dr. Quarter. Dr. Quartermain? Yes? Um, could I talk to you for a minute? Well, Bobby, I'm a little pressed for time. Well, yes, I know, but it, it'll only take a minute. It's very important. What is it? Um, I guess Scotty told you uh, the whole story about what I did. Yes. And since you brought it up, I think it was a cheap, ugly trick. I know. And uh, that's why I want to tell you everything that I told Scotty and Laura. I am very sorry, and I am very ashamed of all those terrible lies that I told. Yeah. Well, um, just one more thing, okay, please? You once told me that you knew what it was like to want somebody so bad that you would do anything to hang on to him. As I also said, it was pointless if the feelings weren't returned. I know, and you were right, but I just thought that you, of all people, might be a little bit more understanding because of your own experience. I mean, if you wanted somebody that bad once, then you'd know what made me do all those terrible things. Well, Bobby, you have a point. I'm uh, the last person in the world to condemn anybody for their feelings. Or things they do because of those feelings sometimes. In any event, I hope you've learned your lesson. I'm still learning a few of my own in that area. Yes, I have. Believe me, and thank you very much for understanding. Um, could I ask you one tremendous favor? I mean, I know that I don't have any right to, but it would really mean a lot to me. What is it? Would you please not say anything to anybody around here about what I did? I mean, people around here ever found out that I get thrown out of nursing school. And, you know, I'm supposed to graduate in June, and I'm supposed to become an RN, and, and that means more to me than anything else in the world right now. Well, like I said, Bobby, I'm the last person in the world to judge anyone. No, I won't say anything. Thank you. I'm getting so sick and tired of crawling and apologizing to everyone just to hang on to the things I worked so hard for. But one day they'll pay. They'll all pay for what they've done to me. Bobby! Oh, that's for me. I guess you are on your way up to Rick Weber's office, and I just want you to know that your mother-in-law and Tracy have already gone up there. You're incredible, Bobby. You've only been back one day, and you know everything that's going on in the hospital. Well, not everything, but it's certainly part of my job to keep my eyes and ears open. Hello, Dr. Weber. Hello. Would you respect me, please? Sure. So where did you walk to? I was looking for you. What for? For this. Mm. I just can't see enough of you. I miss you every time you're out of my sight. Uh, Alan. I'm sure that Leslie feels the same way after being separated from Rick for all those weeks. I was, I was sitting up in my office working on the figures with the cardiac wing. I suddenly had this uncontrollable urge to kiss you. <laughs> well, you're going to have to control those urges if you uh, want to see your cardiac wing a reality. Well, well, I'll try, but I think it's going to be tough. Leslie, I can't describe to you how I felt yesterday morning when Monica came back into the apartment. It was like my life started all over for me. But I'll tell you, I should have been cross with her because she was supposed to call me when the quarantine was lifted so I could go and pick her up, but she's back now and she's all mine, and I guess I'll forgive her that one slip. As a matter of fact, I guess I'll forgive her anything. Would you excuse me? I just remembered I've got to go pick up some files in administration before I get to the clinic. Okay, bye. Listen, um, Tracy, mother are upstairs in Rick's office. He's filling them in on the details of Dad's condition. Do you want to come up? Uh, no. No, I mean, I, I know the details, and I've got to make rounds. All right, I'll pick you up when you're ready for lunch. All right. Okay. Goodbye. If you have any questions, I'm always available. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Rick. See you later. Rick? I want to thank you again for taking such good care of Monica during the quarantine. I know you were a tremendous source of support for her during those awful weeks. Well, I really didn't do anything. I know better than that. Anyway, when are you and Leslie going to be coming to dinner? I'm not sure. I'll have to check with Leslie. Okay. But I'm going to stay after you. I won't take no for an answer. Bobby, the surgery schedule has to go to the main office. I will see you right away. Thank you.
sure you won't change your mind about having lunch? No, thank you. I, I just can't. I meant to tell you earlier how wonderful it was to see Leslie back in the hospital. She must be as happy to have you back as I am about Monica. Listen, Alan, it's getting late, and Mitch is a very busy man. I don't want to keep him waiting. Don't worry about it, Tracy. If I know Miss Williams always... When did you see Leslie, Alan? About an hour ago. I was on my way up to the office of that meeting about Dad. She was just coming in. Thank you. Come on, Mother. Let's go on ahead. All right, I'll see you later, dear. All right. Let them go. Let them go. I just want to take just one more minute to tell you just how grateful I am to have you back home with me. Thank you. And from the way Rick just took off down the car, I'd, I'd say he's feeling as wacky as I do. Yeah, I guess so. Well, we better get on over to the floating rib before Tracy and Mitch plot another epidemic. I just wanted to... I, I've got to call you back, Colleen. Rick just walked in. See you soon, Mrs. Quartermain. All of you, in fact, all the regulars sort of disappeared during the epidemic. Oh, it was a terrible time for everyone. Oh, awful. Well, it's all over now, then, Kevin. Listen, now, uh, there's Mitch. You don't need to show us to our table, Susan. I can see it just fine for me. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Quartermain. It's part of my job. Mother, please. Hi, you have to wait Just a couple of minutes. Can I bring anyone a drink before lunch? Um, I think we'll have a bottle of Chablis and we'll share that. Thank you, Susan. All right, fine. I'll leave the menu and you can order whenever you're ready. Thank you, Susan. My pleasure, Monica. Oh, here we all are again. Oh, this is such a nice restaurant. I'm so glad you indeed suggested coming here. Oh, well, Monica and I have always liked it. It has very nice memories for us, doesn't it, Tony? Gee, Monica, I don't think I've ever known you to be quite so quiet. Well, I'm sorry, Tracy. I guess I'm still just a little tired from all the weeks and during the epidemic. It's certainly understandable. It certainly is. Would you explain something to me, though? How come you got so tongue-tied with Rick just now in the uh, lobby of the hospital? It's not like you. I didn't realize I was tongue-tied. Oh, you were definitely tongue-tied. Alan was rattling on like a schoolboy about how wonderful it was to have you back home and how Leslie must feel the same way about Rick, and you just stood there looking sort of embarrassed. You know, Tracy, you've been paying me an enormous amount of de attention lately. Have I really? No more than usual. Does it bother you? I'm going to excuse myself for a moment. When I return, I hope the topic of conversation has changed. What was the point of all that? I don't know, I guess to show you how observant I am. You know how people fascinate me, Alan. I love to watch their reactions. I can come up with some very interesting observations when I see how one person reacts to another. Or in Monica's case, doesn't. And just what is it that you expect to discover about Monica, Tracy? I'm not really sure yet, Mother, but I am very curious to know why she's so jumpy. Why she got up from the table like that just now. In fact, I find it most intriguing. Yes, I got in late, but I didn't want to leave the clinic shorthanded. Where were you last night? At Colleen's. That's odd. I talked to her this morning, and she didn't say anything about you being here. Well, she didn't lie to you. You didn't ask her if I was there, did you? No, I asked her if you had called today, and she said you hadn't. That was the truth. I hadn't called today. I spent the night there. She knew that I was looking for you, and she didn't volunteer any information that you were there. She also knew how very important it was for me to have some time to think things out. She was just trying to protect me, that's all. Well, I don't like someone having to protect you from me. She was only trying to help. Don't criticize her. It's not her fault. All right, let's forget about Colleen. How about talking about you? You wanted some time. You've had it. Well, do you have any conclusions on, on your thoughts? No, not really. I don't pretend to have resolved anything in my mind, but I did try to give it some good, constructive thought. Well, I would like to hear. I mean, I think I'm entitled since it affects both of us. I'm not being evasive. I just don't think this is the right time or place to discuss it. 
Well, I know it may not be ideal, but I would like some indication of where your thinking is at. We can go into it in depth a little later. I'd rather not go into any of it right now. I've got patients waiting outside. All right, when can we talk to them? Why don't I ask Scotty to take Laura out to dinner tonight, and then we can be alone at home and talk about it then. Fine, if you think that's best. I don't want Laura to hear. She's worried enough about our problems as it is. No more worried than I am. I, I know. While you were thinking, I... I hope you remembered one thing. What? That I love you that has never changed. I'm afraid a definition of what we mean by love is one of the things we should really discuss tonight. I think that's fairly self-explanatory, don't you? Unfortunately, no. Maybe that's been one of our problems all along. Hello? Yes, yes, please. Thank you. I have a patient coming in, so I'm going to have to talk to you later. Shall I meet you in the lobby at the usual time or drive home to you? We have both cars tonight, remember? Dr. Weber? Uh, yes, Mrs. Hardigan. Come on in. Sit down, please. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Well, now, uh, tell me, how are you? Well, happy to have the hospital open again and see things getting back to normal everywhere. Yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, enough of this idle chatter. I think it's time for Mitch to tell us his good news. What's that, Mitch? Oh, no, uh, Tracy's jumping the gun a little bit. It really wasn't anything. Mitch, that's not true. It is something. Senator Mike Redford does not call just anyone and ask him to come and have a meeting in his office at the state capitol. Is that what happened? Yeah, he called me, but it wasn't important. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, what exactly did he say? Nothing much. He's being modest. Senator Redford said he thought... He behaved admirably during the epidemic and made an enviable record for himself. Uh, I'm afraid I don't quite understand, Mr. Williams. Uh, what part did you play in that awful affair? I can't believe you just said that. Well, I'm sorry, dear. Should I know? No. Of course not. Not unless you read any paper in the United States. Mother, this is the man that caught the carrier and ended the epidemic for everybody in Port Charles. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's, uh, very impressive. You should have seen him. He was in his office working around the clock for the people of this city, and I think it's high time he gets the recognition he deserves. What about the other people who are working around the clock, Tracy? Like Steve Hardy, who still is in a hospital bed because he drove himself for hours on end trying to save lives. <sighs> Monica, I'm not underestimating Steve Hardy. I think you are, Tracy. Don't Monica, don't be upset. I'm not trying to minimize anything that Steve Hardy did or say that anything I did was more important. Well, what about the people that died fighting the epidemic? Where is their recognition? I know. I mean, I, I am very well aware of that. Anybody who had anything to do with the hospital had made much more of a contribution than I did. Oh, I agree. just a minute now, Mitch. Please don't put yourself down. Monica just happens to be a little touchy. I am not touchy, Tracy, and I'm not jumpy, and I would be eternally grateful if you would stop saying it. Oh, darling, please, now don't get upset. Well, um, why don't we just change the subject? I think that's probably a very sound idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, I really, I have to get back to the hospital. If I stay, I'll only put a damper on the party. I'll go with you. No, really. Uh, you stay and make sure that Lila gets back to the hotel. You sure? Yes, I oh. Forgive me, Lila. Really, but uh, I do have to get back. Of course, dear, I understand. Goodbye, Lila. Goodbye. I'll see you soon. Yes. Okay. Dry yourselves. Well, I certainly hope Monica gets some much-needed rest and gets over her jumpiness. I can imagine it's very difficult for you to live with, Helen. I don't see any sign of it, Tracy, except when she's around you. And then it's totally understandable. You give her every provocation. I do not. I don't want to argue the point of you. Mother, why don't I find you a cab so you can get back to Dad? Uh, yes, dear. I don't want to leave him alone for too long. Well, is everyone going to rush off just because Monica did? We're finished. Why not go? Well, we're going to finish our coffee and then we'll go. You go ahead. You should take care of the check. 
Thank you again for lunch, Alan. Nice to see you again, Mrs. Griffin. Good night, Mrs. Griffin. I think I'll get you a cab outside. If not, I'll drive you home. All right. All right. Well, you sure put an end to that party fast enough once you got going. I'm glad I did. Now I get to be alone with you. Which to me is the best of all possible worlds. Mm -hmm.